What's going on guys and welcome back to your brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about several things. But before we get into that, I do want to say guys, um, I first want to thank my Patreon supporters which is Brandon and Mirza. Uh, dude, I know, I'm sorry. But anyway, thank you guys so much for supporting me. Also guys, if you're not subscribed, I would... I mean, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed. If you find my channel entertaining or even educational, you know, on, on some on some occasions, I would greatly appreciate you supporting me by hitting that subscribe button. <clears throat> also, if you feel like supporting me other than watching my videos, there are links down below where you could join my Patreon or even buy me some uh, some coffee. I would greatly appreciate some cup of coffee. But anyways, thank you guys for supporting me. No matter how you're supporting me, thank you guys so much for for being there with me. So let's get back into the video. So in today's in today's video, we're, I was gonna say in today's episode, but in today's video, we're gonna be talking about uh, three different things: validation, uh, paranoid, and also uh, what's the, what's the other one? Associations, right? Associations being in the biggest topic, and we're gonna actually split that into two videos. But I will get into that once we talk about associations. So first of all, let's talk about validations. And this is one thing I'm not going to be talking about or like writing code over because we've done this so many times, guys. And I will leave this link down below in the description so that we could check this out. This is purely for validations. But SQLize does give you like a list. Look at this. A plethora. I mean, this is a ton of things that you could do with just a uh, validation, right? But basically, every time you create an attribute for a model, like let's like say the email or username or whatever you could actually say is email. I think is email is here somewhere. Let me see. Yeah, right here is email and you're going to set this for true and it's going to check for email formats like things like that, right? Simple things, but the uh, the most uh, necessary things or, or the most used things. And these these things does use the validator.js module. So you don't have to install that you guys. Uh, you don't have to install that separately. It already comes with it. SQLize already comes with it. So another, you know, module that you do not have to install. But I would greatly appreciate if you just, well, yeah, I would, I, I would I'm not going to say appreciate. Guys, it's it's up to you guys. But honestly, just read this this little section right here, man. It's, it's like a, a three-minute skim. Honestly, it does not take too long to understand how to do validations in SQLize. That's why I don't want to go over it. And another thing, that's it for validation, basically. I mean, that's it. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to go over it. Another thing I want to talk about is paranoid. Now, what is paranoid exactly? Paranoid, right here, I already have it. I already set this up, so that way we can speed through it because it's a simple thing. But paranoid is basically a soft deletion. Now, what is a soft deletion? Basically, when you delete your account or whatever, it doesn't really delete it from the database. It sets a flag up saying that you've deleted it, but it doesn't really delete it. That's called a soft deletion. A hard deletion is the opposite. Obviously, it does delete it from the database, right? But if you set up this, if I set up this model, this user model to be paranoid, every time we try to delete a user, it's not going to, you know, delete it per se. It's going to set up a flag to delete it. I mean, it's going to set up a flag that you deleted it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at an example right here. So I, since I did set this user to be, or this model to be paranoid, and let's actually check my uh, what I have over here. If I run this right now, you're going to see that I have this test set. I'm going to copy that. Test set. We're going to try to delete this guy. And if you, you can see, it did add another column saying deleted at. And right now, everything is not. But let's try to delete set at. This, this user right here, set at. Or test set. Okay. So I'm going to go to my code, go to user service. And right here, and delete user. I'm going to say where first name equals. Oh, I already have it. Okay. So let's go to postman and delete this guy. So I'm right here. I'm on the post. I'm going to delete it. So let's send this right here. And we got deleted user. So if you go to our PG admin, run it again, you're going to see that. Check this out. Look at this. It set a timestamp of when this user was actually deleted. A soft deletion, right? Like I said, this thing, this thing right here is very, very useful. This is what, in my opinion, I think all the companies, but you know, to be in the saver side, I'm saying mostly all companies use paranoid um, to delete accounts. Come on, guys, they're not going to give up your 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 information, you know, willy nilly. No, they're not going to do that. They're, they're going to keep it and tell you that it was deleted. But anyways, I, that's another whole topic about companies doing that and all that. So that's 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 in my opinion. It's wrong that she deleted it, but hey, well, you signed up, right? So. <laughs> 
Anyways, now that we have this soft deletion, um, now that we have our user or user model as paranoid, can we delete hard? Can we do a hard deletion? And the answer is yes. You could actually do hard deletion even though you set it up as paranoid. How do we do that? Let's let's um you know, we're going to get rid of all these WDJs. So we're going to delete all these WDJs. How do we do that exactly? Since we said paranoid uh, user model as paranoid. All we have to do is, where first name equals WDJ, all we have to do is add in another option right here. And this option is going to be force to true. And this is going to tell it, this is going to tell SQLize to a hey, we actually want you to delete this user. If I hit save here, go to Postman, hit send, you're going to see deleted user. Let's go back to our PG admin, run this one more time. And you can see that all of our WDJs have actually been deleted. That's a good thing. Now, one other thing that I want to go over about Paranoid is now that we have this, like, what else can you do with this? We have this soft deletion of test set, right? which is true, but we could actually restore this if we wanted to, you know, sometimes you delete your account and then it gives you that, that, uh, message saying that if you ever want to come back or restore your account, just sign in with your usual credentials and then, or something along those lines, right? And then you'll have your full account again, something along those lines, right? You've, you've all seen it. I've seen it so many times, but you've all seen it. So the way you restore a certain person or user is, in this case, I'll, it would be another service, but I'm going to just use the least service. Instead of saying destroy, you will say restore, and then where, uh, what was it again? Restore where, I forgot the name. Here it is. Let me just copy that. <clears throat> where first name equals this. This is what we want to restore. Whoa. This is what we want to restore and get rid of this. Control save. So we're gonna, instead of deleting it, we're gonna restore this user right here. So if we go over here at Postman and run that, it's gonna see delete user, but it didn't delete it. You know what I'm talking about. Let's go to PG Admin, refresh this again, or run this again, and you're gonna see that, hey, look at this, no. Deleted that is no now, it's set to no, meaning that it has been restored. This user has been restored. Now, even though this is a very simple topic and I, I just could have uh, explained to you guys, I really wanted to show you that because a lot of companies does does do this and this and I, I just want you guys to be careful on where you guys sign up, right? Because you, you're giving your information to the internet, which is not a, I'm not going to say it's a good thing nor a bad thing, depending on where you sign up, right? So uh, basically, once you give out your, your information, guys, more than likely, it's never going to leave that website or that database more than likely it's not. So just be careful on who you give your da data to, because when you say delete, they're more than likely not going to actually delete it. It's going to be a soft deletion. Now enough about that guys. Let's talk about associations. The thing that you want to talk about, right? The thing you want to learn. And there's three types of uh, associations, right? One to one, one to many and many to many relationships. Now let's go over, and this is where I'm going to tell you, this is where we're going to be splitting this video off into two things or two videos, right? I don't want this video to be longer than what it needs to be. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is explaining what those associations are and some quick examples on like what they, where would use them, right? And then in the next video, we're going to actually code them and, and SQLize, using SQLize. We're going to be setting up those kinds of relationships or associations, right? But first, I want to get it. I want to I wanna, uh, give those people that don't understand associations or these three types of associations, I want to give them a quick tutorial on like uh, what it is and some examples of them and then get into the coding part of it. So first of all, let's talk about a, uh, the one-to-one -one, uh, relationship, right? So I'm going to just write it right here. One to one relationship. So basically, let's say that we have two tables, right? We have a table for students, student, a student's table, which consists of an ID, the student's ID, obviously, their first name and their last name, right? And over here, we have the contact info, contact info, info, right? This is another table for contact info. And in here, we have the student's ID, their, let's say their city, uh, city, their address, whatever, right? Address, their zip and all that information, right? Everything else containing their zip, their contact, their phone number, email, whatever, right? 
basically right here this would be considered a one-to-one -one relationship why it's because you only want let's say that we have a a student right here that has the id of one two three you only want this id to be associated to one contact info right let's say the let's say that this contact info right here right here belongs to ben i don't know but you only want this id to be associated to only one person right and with their contact info and vice versa you only want ben to be associated to one id right so that's a one to one relationship now there's other examples like you could even put in employees and their employee ids right you don't want an employee with three ids meaning three access levels probably you only want one employee with one id right all those things right that's that's a one-to-one -one relationship it's pretty pretty simple now let's talk about a one-to-many relationship right let's, let's put it up here oops a one to many relationship all right, so what is a one-to-many relationship? An example of this could be, let's say, Twitter, for example, right? So you have a table of a user, right? It doesn't really matter what it is. And then you have a tw table of a tweet. So basically, a user could have many tweets. It could have this tweet. It could have another tweet up here. It could have another tweet, right? Basically, a user could have tons and tons of tweets, right? That's a, an example of one-to-many. One user could have many tweets. Another example would be like an e-commerce, right? One user could order many products, right? And most of the time, the name is going to say it all, guys. One-to-one, -one, you know, one-to-many, you know, one thing could have many. Anyways, that's a quick example of one-to-many relationship. Now, let's talk about the uh, one or many-to-many -many relationship. This is one that it's very, very, this is the, I'm going to say this is the most confusing one out of all of them, many-to-many. -many. The reason why is because how you set it up in the, code code base me explaining it is very simple many to many basically again it could be users and tables right we have a table of all the users right users and we have a table of all the products products right so many users could have many products or could purchase many products and many products can be purchased by many users right that's as simple as it can get but it, it doesn't when, when you when you put this in SQLized terms or in NSQL's terms, it doesn't really come out like this when you start coding it out, right? It doesn't come out like when you have one table have has too many too many relationship with this other table. It doesn't work that way. Most of the time, how you're going to see it in in code base is you're gonna have three tables. And it'll it'll be better if I explain it like this. Uh, let me actually get rid of all this stuff, and we're gonna be explaining it with. Um, the school college again okay so in college you're gonna have right here you're gonna have a the students table right all the students right this is a table for all the students right and this students table is going to consist of the id it's going to consist of the uh last name and then first name of the student right also you're going to have a table of all the classes that that college offers right so we're going to say classes that this college offers right and this is going to consist of a class id is also going to consist of the title of that uh class and then the description right desc -E whatever now in this case one student could have many classes and many classes or one class could have many students which is basically a many to many relationship correct but like i said it's not as simple when you code it out so the way you're going to see this most of the time when you code it out is that you're going to have a third table and this is called a join table and we're going to call this table the enrollments of the student right enrollments and basically inside of here what we're going to have is the student id the class id and the enrollment id so now in code base now what we could say is that hey Let's say student ID one, two, three has many enrollments, right? It could have as much enrollments, obviously, right? It could have math or algebra and then English and then 
philosophy or whatever you want, right? Literature, whatever, man, whatever you take in college, right? It has, those are, those, each one of those are, is an enrollment. You enrolled into math, you enrolled into literacy, you enrolled into arts, whatever, man, it doesn't really matter. So this person, this one, two, three student ID could have many, many, many enrollments, right? And these classes could be enrolled many, many times. So this class could be enrolled by another student. It could be enrolled by another student. It could be enrolled into another student. It could be enrolled by another student. It doesn't really matter. But this whole thing right here, all of this right here is literally a one-to-one -one relationship. I mean, not one, sorry, sorry. It's, it's a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? Like I said, it's not as clear when you start coding it because you're going to have three tables instead of two tables. In the one-to-one -one and the one-to-many, you could actually do relationships with just two tables. But with a many-to-many, -many, almost all the time, how much is arguably say all the time, you're going to see three tables. This is because this is how you're going to set it up. And this table, like I said, is called a join table. Or a... Um, or the uh, the junction table. I was trying to remember the name of it. So uh, it would be better if I illustrated like this, uh, as you'll probably see it most of the time. You'll probably see it like this, where there's a line right here, and then like chicken's feet, <laughs> and then chicken's feet right here, and then a line. Right. This is a one to many relationship and one to many relationship, and this whole thing is considered a many to many to to many relationship. Right. I hope you got that. It's it's very it's many to many relationship is the most confusing one out of all of them. But if you do understand it, you 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 basically it's very very simple, right? And I hope I did a very good job in explaining that uh, this to you guys. I really do hope that. But anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I know this is a very short video, but like I said, in the next video, we're going to actually start coding out uh, associations, which is going to be a very long video on its own because you could do a lot of things, a lot of options and a lot of, uh, you know, well, yeah, options that you could add on to the associations, which we're going to be talking about. But yeah, like I said, that's going to be another video in the next video anyways. It's going to be on coding associations with SQLize. So I hope I did you a solid or to those people, I hope you uh, understood the associations, also validations and paranoid. I hope you got all that, guys, because those are things that you are going to be using in this in the uh, SQLize world. All right. <laughs> SQLize. Yeah. SQLize world. Anyways. Thank you guys for watching my videos. I really do appreciate you spending your time watching my videos. It does help me a lot. Please hit that like button. Consider subscribing and comment down below on what you thought about the video so far. And guys, honestly, thank you guys. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Bye.